Good evening and welcome to the Big Brain Golf Show. My name is Eric Rett. I'm your resident host and moderator of this evening's panel of Big Brain Teaching Professionals. On my right, Mr. Chris Walkie. He's been a teaching professional for over 30 years and is recognized as one of the top teaching professionals in the country. Chris has been fortunate to work with many top PGA and LPGA Tour professionals and is the inventor of the Power Package Golf Training Tool. Also, Mr. Walkie has never seen a microphone he didn't like, and he's world-renowned for his expertise in hitting drivers off the deck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> On his right is Mr. Dave Curtis. Dave comes from us to us uh, as a teaching professional, PGA teaching professional from West Mission Hills Resort and the Classic Club here in Palm Desert. Uh, Dave's an accomplished player and has a tremendous amount of expertise in tonight's specific topic on junior golf. So Dave's right is Mr. Tony Greco. Tony's from Bear Creek Golf Club up in Murrieta, California. Uh, Tony's worked with uh, Tom Pernice Jr. from the Champions Tour uh, for a number of years as well as Brent Grant, uh, upcoming golf professional playing the Colin Ferry Tour. So gentlemen, tonight, tonight's topic is are you ready? Hold on, we saw that. I'm excited. Junior development. What are we going to do with our juniors? There's so much going on nowadays. Mm. So much instruction, so much play, so many places to play. What are we going to do? So as you view the upcoming video, I'm going to walk you through a little bit about uh, the history of our, our uh, player we're going to take a look at. Okay? okay? All right. Sounds good. Let's do it. So tonight's guest student is Charlie Durheim <laughs> from Vancouver, Canada. He's 15 years old. He's been playing for 11 years. Jesus, how's that possible? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, that's Tiger Woods stuff. Right? Yeah. His handicap is two. Jesus, he could beat all three of you guys. Exactly. All right. The estimated practice round days and rounds combined in 2020 are almost 200 rounds. How the hell does he do that living in Vancouver, Canada, where it rains all the time? He's got to have a good mud game. Anyway, his most typical shot is a is a hot draw, meaning hot draw. rope hooks, baby. And ball striking goals like everybody else, he wants to hit in the center of the club face and more consistent. As so, a two? Yeah, I mean, must be able to putt. Anyway, so here we go. Dave, take it away. I mean, the one thing I did notice is this kid looked a lot like Walkie did when he was 15 years old. Now look at him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, ahead. so just, uh, I mean, obviously a two handicap, unbelievable <laughs> contact. He did have a lot more air. <laughs> uh, unbelievable contact there. So um, to take away that that hot hot draw, let's let's get him to hit one high left. Let's let's get him working on his hands a little bit. Um, and and kind of to me, I would just leave the rest alone. That would be that would be my true opinion about he it. He looks like a natural player. Yeah, right. I mean, he's, he's got some a real talent. You know, path and face control. Yeah. If I would hit some different shots. Uh, absolutely. You know, you didn't know how to hook it a high, kind of a high cut going this right. way. Just right. kind of learn what the feels are through the ball that right. control. Yeah. yeah, so I, I like a little little example possibly. We go, we do, we have nine squares. You have three at the top, three in the middle, three down below. I have them hit all the squares. Yep. I mean, this guy, this kid will be just a player. Oh, no, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I I, the, go, ahead. Go, go, go ahead. So I was just going to say, I mean, for the, the viewing audience, you know, you don't necessarily always have to change your golf swing to change, to actually change your swing, you can, you know, if you hit hooks, hit some fades, you know, you, you know, I, I, I play golf now because I don't play very much, you know, if I'm hitting too many hooks, I hit fades and all of a sudden it neutralizes itself, so, so there's a lot of ways to go about it without, without getting crazy with mechanics and trying to change your golf swing all the time. What do you think they did in four cameras? If the guy was hitting hooks, eh, trying to hit fades. Right. Right. You hit too high, you hit it low. Right. Harvey Pettick, hit it under that yeah. bench so over there. Four sure. cameras and four force plates, they had to do something. That's right. so those guys are pretty good. Yep. That's and then right. his mindset, his right. mindset says target, what he thinks is yeah. target, love it. Right? For sure. Don't get anything else in your head. Think target. For sure. Right. I, I would say this great golf swing. I mean, he looks athletic. He says he played hockey. Just me looking at it, for, for I would say, okay, step in there, hit a little slap shot, split the grip, hit some slap shots, hit some little little pull cuts with the slap shot, all of a sudden his body's going to be on top of himself. He's going to yeah. open up more. He's going to open up more. He's going to be control, more stacked. Sure, 100%. You know, I'd have him yeah. slide in there and go hit me a little slap shot, split grip with a golf club. Mm -hmm. He'll fix all the problems. my hockey stick in the car. Oh, gee. Oh, this is, this kind of goes to what all you guys have said. You know, you got these, these kids, you got these players that come to you that are incredibly talented, have all this athletic ability, 
and you gotta let them go. You take with what they you take what they got, and all you're doing is refining it, making it a little bit better, yeah. right? We're not changing, trying to change the world here, right? Right, for, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I like that he plays on a travel hockey team. I like that he plays golf equally as much as he plays hockey. It, 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 you know, a kid like that's got a chance to do some great things. He's got to sure. use different parts of his brain, and he understands problem solving. And, right. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. So Tony, that was a great comment you made about, you know, the kid playing multiple sports. Mm -hmm. You know, so many now nowadays, so many kids are only golf. That's it. Pushed yep. all the time, all the tournaments. The parents on them. What do you guys think about that? About what we see now again nowadays in junior golf? I mean, let them let them be a kid. <laughs> yeah. I mean, plain and simple. They're ten years old. They're eight years old. Let them be a kid. Yeah. Let them let them go out. Let them run around. Uh, let them go to the beach. Let them enjoy. Mm -hmm. Let them don't get them burnt out. Right. Ride bikes. I. I don't know. I, I. I played tons of different sports. They obviously gravitated towards golf as I got in my later teens. But, you know, I, I I think if kids are playing multiple sports, if that's what they like is sports, um, you know, it just it it just helps their hand eye coordination, their body control. They, they, they they'll get even better at golf if that's what they're doing. Right, if they have different avenues and playing instruments and and just have their hands in all sorts of different things, so that they just become a more well-rounded person, right? right? And then and they have more fun and and you know you see these parents nowadays they they, they they're thinking about their kids' college, right. you know, literally right as the child is born and right. they got plans for this child, right? And this child hasn't even lived one day to me. He, it's kind of like it's it's kind of like my son when he grew up he played golf but he uses he he's in the business world now right. and he's 25 years old but there's so very few people that grew up in the environment you know the golf environment yeah. where we address each other properly oh, Mr. Yeah. you know yeah. growing up and know how to act and now he's in this business world where so few of his younger peers have ever played golf so now he's taken that game that we all love right mm -hmm. and now he's moved into the business environment where he's playing he's playing with guys that invite him to go play that that others his same age track would never have that opportunity so it's not always about playing the tour right no i mean golf is it teaches you about life right, right. i mean there's so many great lessons in that but i i, I just think at, at at this stage now you just have parents thinking about the tour right you have parents you know Pressuring their children to, to play college golf right. or, or to yeah, it'll be a matter what sport it is whether it's tennis, golf, whatever mm -hmm. the uh, you know I think you gotta let them play whatever sport they want so they so they yeah. gravitate toward one something that's yeah, 13, sure. 14, or fifteen years old. Um, but these parents at eight years old say, okay, you're gonna be a tennis player. Yeah, you know they're all over them all the time. So I mean, yeah. you know, and then they by the time they're sixteen, they're burnt out yeah, and right. the whole thing shot. So yeah. Yeah. Golf's another one of those things you can't push a kid to play golf. Yeah. Play at practice. No. He's got to want. He's got to want. You got to think want. about yeah. it. He's got to dream about it. He's right. got to eat it. Yep. Everything about it. He's got to want it to right. be able to play golf. Because that's not, you know, going to the field and playing soccer for a couple hours. That's going to the golf course at six thirty and coming home at nine thirty. Yeah. Because you're like we all did growing up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Parents yeah. drop us off. That's on it. The weekend. Yeah, they always knew where you were. And that's. I mean, I guess we can maybe jump into that topic too, like with the parents. Mm -hmm. I mean. The helicopter parents is the term now. Right. The helicopter parents. So, uh, I suggest for some of my uh, my parents for the kids there, just back off, back off a little bit. Yep. It's my honest opinion. I have I have the rope. I'm gonna I'm gonna take the kid. They'll be safe. Everything's good. I'll do a little summary on the email, and you pick up your kid. I mean, a supportive role. It, absolutely. Right. A supportive role, not a. If he, needs, if he needs a new club, right. if he needs a new club, get him a new club. Yep. Right. So, but just never hovering over every minute of that lesson. Right. Right. I, I, I think I was fortunate my parents knew nothing about golf, but I gravitated towards it. Right. right. Lucky enough to be able to, to play at a country club as a right. 13 year old kid. Right. Super fortunate. Right. Right. But, you know, I learned so much more from that just experimentation. Right. Learning how to open the club face and hit bunker shots. Learning how to shut it down, hit it over a tree, mm -hmm. hit it around a tree. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Texas. It was like play under the wind, fail a ton, right? You know, and and 
And I get a lot of my parents, it's okay, we need a lesson a week, we need twice a week, mm-hmm. we need three times a week. Mm-hmm. You know, like at what point, right, is that kid really learning for themselves, yeah. Yeah. right? And, and I think there needs to be some balance and some structure and a little bit of fundamentals and, and things like that. But ultimately, if the child really wants it and they really want to play well, they need to do that in experimentation on their own. I was the same way. I grew up in that same type of environment where I was yep. so fortunate to have the opportunity yep. to go play at a club. And there were a lot of good other junior players there. And yep. It was. It was dawn to dusk every right. day in the mm-hmm. summer. The golf professional told me one time, he says, you need to take a day off. Yeah. Mark. <laughs> I mean, it was that ridiculous. Right. But you think back and the first time you ever played cross-country golf. Oh, you yeah. Know? Best. Yeah. You know, Best ever. Took a, wait for the golf pros to get off work and you went to play golf with them at 7 o'clock, it was 8 o'clock. And next thing you know, it's getting dark, and the guy says, "All right, we're playing from number six to number nine. Yeah, what? Sure. Yeah, that's, that's a, called cross country yeah, golf. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's all those those Monster. unbelievably fun uh, experiences that you have growing up, and and but more importantly, you got to want to do it yourself. But how much yeah. of you know? I know myself. I grew up in a country club. I was lucky enough to do that. Um, but half of it was just. You wanted to go to the club because your buddies were there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you play golf. We did, yeah. we did the same thing you did. We were yeah. playing cross, we were there until yeah. dark or whatever, yeah. you know. But if, if if I went to a driving range by myself, somebody dropped me off at a club and there was no one to hang out with, yeah. I probably wouldn't want to play. That's right. You know, I, you know yeah. it's just. Yeah. You know, hitting the putts for the going to the US Open or the Masters. Contest, yeah. You know. yeah. Contest, competition. Yeah. yeah. It's, the greatest, it's the greatest game, it's, it's the greatest it's, deal in the world. Know, kids, can be com- kid. kids can be competitive, right? Yeah. That they, there are competitive yeah. juices flowing there within kids. So they compete yeah. against their buddies and those kind of things, right? If the parent is more competitive than the child, it never works. Right. It work. won't work. Right. right? So then the kid just needs to have fun. Right. So mm-hmm. if you really want to play a supportive role, like you were saying. What was that word again? Right, right. Fun. Fun? Wait, right. right. what? Yeah. what? Yeah. That's, so if, that's it. So if he does want to play, but he's not as competitive as you, and maybe he's not so interested in playing a ton of tournaments, he can still play the game and have right. it. Right. 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 So how do you, Dave, how do you make it fun for the kids? What, what's your... Oh man, your program you got going on. Here. Yeah, so I mean, this is a, a big shout out to Operation Thirty Six. I mean, I, I can't I can't stress it enough. It's, it's brand new, right? Uh, it's it's been around probably the last five years. Oh, so um, it was originated in North Carolina by two PJ professionals. But um, big shout out to how they structure the program, um, and I'll be real quick with it. But it's. What's the point of taking a golf, uh, excuse me, what's the point of taking a swim lesson without getting in the pool? Huh. It's the truth. What's the point? Correct. Okay, so this, this, this program gets the kids out playing, which we just all mentioned, cross country golf. Right. We played, we played, we played. Did we bang balls and take lessons three times a week? Correct. No, no. We didn't, we played. Well, that's right. Okay, that's why I'm I'm a I'm a teaching professional. Right. That's why I'm in the industry because right. I, I played golf. I had fun right. with it. Right. right. And then now it's my job to grow the game, so these kids don't don't get uh, kind of fed up with it and, and these like four hour nine hole events for these junior yeah. tournaments. So, um, so but anyway, that. yeah, my son played the U.S. Kids Golf Tour, signed up for a series. Played the whole series. It took three and a half to four hours to play nine holes each tournament. Yeah, terrible. Played terrible. that series. He walked off the last tournament and said, I don't want to play golf anymore. What's he do now? Plays tennis. There you go. Because it's fast. Yeah. You yeah. can run around. Yeah. You know, but the three and a half, four hours, you know, that's, I think, in my opinion, the biggest thing is what you talk about the helicopter parents, right? They're they're out there caddying for these kids. You know, they started five years old, six, you know, it's okay. You know, maybe five years old, you get around the golf course, but, you know, I started playing golf when I was five. I carried my bag every round I ever played in a tournament, whatever it was, until I was, maybe when I was 16, I was playing a high level amateur and my dad, somebody caddy for me, right? Mm-hmm. But they got to start carrying their own bags. You know, you got a certain amount of time to play. It yeah. was two and a half hours, right. get it around. So right. your first caddy was 16? Well, you're probably your first 16 years old. What about you? And I had a caddy? Yeah. Oh yeah. Probably 17, like 16, 17. Three, you get a bigger seven, tournament, seven, seven. you gotta have a caddy. I qualified for the Pacific Coast Amateur at LA Country Club. Don't date me now, but 1979. <laughs> mm-hmm. Never had a caddy before. Never been to LA before. Mm-hmm. I lived, grew up in Oregon. So I get this caddy, he says he's gonna help me out there, right? So we get to about the fifth hole, little three part going down the hill. I make it from 50 feet. I start walking for him. He goes, Whoa, wait a minute. I said, What? He says, Let me get you some room service. 
<laughs> that was my first experience with a cat. A room service, basically. Awesome. I, I, it, it's, when you teach juniors, when you coach juniors, that you can tell there's, there's a couple of these kids that are going to be in that U.S. Kids Tour, and they, they want to be competitive, yes. and they are competitive, and they're very talented, and that's what they want to be. And, and there are some supportive parents, there are some helicopter parents, and then there's a kid that just wants to play. Right. Right, and he just wants to play, and he wants to have fun, and you've got to make it fun for him. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he's not as talented as Johnny over here, yeah. right? And he's probably not going to play tournament golf forever, but at least make it fun for him. So, like your son, right. he can play for the rest of his life. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And and How make many... good relationships, and and have respect, and learn honesty. How many kids do you remember growing up that were the finest junior players on the planet? You know, that were unbelievably good. And once they went off to college, you never heard from them again. Where, where are they now? Right. right. Where, and how many you found in college or even later that blossomed, it, blossomed, that later. blossomed and became yeah. the best, some of the best players in the world? Sure. I, I mean, it happened all the time where I grew up. Yeah. It was that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But once again, they don't like when the parents wanted more or they, yeah. they burned the kids out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They could be talented, but it's, yeah. you know. Yeah. You just want to make it fun. Yeah. And even if they are competitive, you still want them to make it fun too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then like, it just even like starting, starting the kid, right? So what, you know, like, let's say you have a six year old. What, what do we do to start them? Like, in your opinion, where, where would you go with it? Like, do you basically go out and say, Hey, this is what a golf course is all about. You get them. I think the hook, line and sinker is the golf cart. Yeah, sure. That's cool. Oh yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, for sure. that's like the ultimate right. yeah. I can book. drive a golf cart. I can yeah. drive a golf cart. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. And that's, and I spend, with my juniors, I take a little bit of that five minute, whatever, and let's drive yeah, the cool. cart on the tee. Nice. Let's, let's do like a little obstacle course, right? They love it. And then that, awesome. keep them coming back. And they want to go with their dad, and, their mom or dad. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, just cool. that, to me, like uh, playing with my grandpa, I mean, that was an awesome experience, but driving the golf cart was like, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, right. I get to do that. Yeah. I mean, Chris never had that experience. He just said he just didn't drive my golf cart until he was 18 years old. So <laughs> well, well, he couldn't pass the driver's test. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He walked up the hill. He didn't drive off the deck. I couldn't afford tees, so I hit it off the deck. That's right. It only goes 230. It's beautiful in the air. No, I mean, you make it fun. You have them hit stuff hard, right? I mean, yeah. six, eight-year-old boys... Whatever it may be, they just want to hit stuff, right? right. Even girls, they want to, they just want to slam something. Right. My little guy, yeah, just give him a golf club, he's just slamming the tree. Well, he, right. He's got some speed. Right. Know, like, he's not crazy into golf, but I mean, when he hits the ball, he's, he's got a ton of speed. He just wants to hit something hard, yeah. right? You give him some speed, you let him have fun, then you introduce him to the course, you yeah. know? But maybe just put a little bowl of grip in their hands, so their grip's pretty good for the rest of their life. Yeah. Stuff like that, and then they, they end up having some fun, and maybe they gravitate toward it. Start them, start them putting. Right. Start them close to the hole. Work, work their way back. Right. That's, I mean, that's right. the Operation Thirty Six model. Start close. Which is cool. Yep. Work back. Um, it builds, it builds confidence. Mm -hmm. It knows that they can score from really hundred yards and in. It won't take them forever to yep. play golf. That's good. So, all right. So, gone through a lot of really <laughs> great stuff. So, summarize it up, boys. Good, Tony. Summarize it up. Play golf, kids. Keep it fun. I mean, keep it fun. Parents, if you're watching this, parents, just, it's okay to give your kid a day off. It's, oh, yes. It's, it, you don't yeah. have to do the nine to five grind for, for golf instruction. Right. Just get, let them be a kid. Let them have fun. Obviously, right. that's a big word right now. Um, but yeah, just don't, don't burn them out. No. Be responsible for your own golf bag. Carry your own golf bag. Yes. Learn how to play fast. Get it quick. Enjoy the game. <laughs> How, be out there all day long. How come it's so easy for those kids to carry those bags? And nowadays, when we have to go play and walk someplace, it's like your back starts hurting. And <laughs> why is that? Oh, all the kids I see nowadays push, 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 push bags. Push bags. Yeah, I'll, I'll push bags. Push bags. I know. I know. <laughs> so, uh, question for you, gentlemen: um, What's the best age? What's the best age to start your kid playing golf? Who wants to take that one? Go ahead, Chris. Uh, I don't know. There's a specific age. Um, it may be how the, the the youngsters kind of progressing with their strength. I mean, you know, six, seven years old, five, six, seven, maybe. Um, what do you think there, Tony? You're shaking your head over there. No, no, no. <laughs> I, 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 
I, I, you know, if they show interest, you could put a club in their hand, put a little small club in their hand. They got a plastic club at two, whatever, wax and balls in the, right. in the living room. I, you know, I don't think there's a perfect age. Uh, but again, I think there's a perfect age for the kids to be playing whatever they want to play. I mean, if they're six years old and, you know, they'd rather throw balls against the, you know, the, the garage than go play golf and let them throw balls against the garage. Right. Yeah, right. If all of a sudden they're 10 and now they're like, yeah, dad, I want to go out there to the golf course with you. Now, okay, now's the time. So, so even bigger, but to, but to introduce them, what do you think is a kind of a proper age? I mean, five, six years old? I would, so being in a resort, we're working at a resort. We get a lot of parents. I, I, I want my, my uh, son or daughter to have golf clubs. Okay, perfect. What are their age? Four. <laughs> what four? Okay. Yeah. How's their attention span? Is yeah, my, right, my very first, first question. Yeah, okay. Attention span. And I'm like, uh, I says, if they can focus for 10 minutes, it's going to be a victory for a four year old. Yeah, right. And then on the other side of that, it's up to the instructor to make it an experience. Yeah. All right. So, you know, some of these instructors are like, I don't have time for kids. I, I, I don't know. I mean, that's obviously as a, as a teaching professional, you have to grow the game. So yep. um, you got to make the kid have fun. Like talk with them. Do you like Legos? Do you like, uh, say, a Minecraft? Sure. Whatever. And then that gets them going. Mm -hmm. that, that breaks, let's call it the icebreaker. Yeah, right. right. And then you, and then you have them from there. Then you can just kind of feed off of that. Did you watch this movie? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be about golf. No. Right. Just like, hey, you see this putter? You have to engage. You have to engage. Yeah, like pretend it's a laser and, and, and you're hitting it at the hole. I mean, right. that that's Something the seeker. Like like, yeah. You got to hook them, right. right? So, but any to me, any age after that, it's up to the instructor to make it enjoyable. So we're sitting here at Club Fix. We're surrounded by golf clubs. Mm. Yep. Let's so see. junior sets. Oh, you yeah. know, length, size, weight. What do you think? What What's the best thing for a parent to do? It's gotten better over the years. For uh, sure. Absolutely. So junior sets, you mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Some of the companies, U.S. Kids. Uh, Ping. 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 Good job with kids. Uh, Taylor made doing good. Callaway has uh, much better than probably the, oh, the cut down, steel, yeah, cut down, yeah, heavy, heavy stuff. Oh, oh, under, right, over. over right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that, so nowadays, equipment's a lot better. It's a must. Right. It's a must for, yeah. the, for the kids. Okay. You know, Ricky, Ricky, he's got a little junior set, like a little, uh, Cobra's got some age group stuff, you know, and he's really popular with the kids. And, you know, I got my little guy, you know, a set of his, like, oh, Ricky, I yeah. the guy's got him on the box, right? You know, that kind of stuff is, is cool. Yeah. And I mean, it's light and it's, they can swing it. Do they need to blow $500? No. No. Yeah. You think they go through shoes, watch them go through right. a set of clubs. Right. Correct. Don't and really and it comes with that. It's like a sandwich and iron right. and a set yeah. iron and a driver. Yeah. And right. just get a putter, get a oh, hybrid. Yeah. Um, yeah, something like that. Yeah, we need two or three clubs. Yeah, two or three yeah, clubs. Yeah, yeah. Sandwich, middle iron, hybrid, yep. putter, to ready to go. And even even on the club, like, what do you think about getting like a molded grip? First thing I did was like first, first molded grip right yep. away. First thing, put a molded grip on there. Put it on the nine iron, bingo, yep. perfect grip. They're all set. Like you get them a three iron, like Seve, so <laughs> learn how to hit it out of bunker, <laughs> do the whole deal. Just start them off the right way, okay? Absolutely. Okay. Thanks, guys. That was great. Cool. All right. Well. So we just like to say thank you so much to Golf Fix here in Palm Desert for the use of their beautiful facility. And thanks to our golf professionals here tonight. We think we learned some really good stuff. And I think they showed that they do have relatively large brains. And of course, a thank you, big thank you out to our sponsors, 59 Belts and the Power Package. So make sure you subscribe to our Big Brain Golf Show channel and make sure you check and get on uh, Twitter and Instagram, and make sure you tell all your friends and come back next time. So until then, we'll see you, see you next time. Bye.